Imagine Rocky without Philadelphia. Sylvester and I wanted to shoot the exteriors in Philly. The producer said, no way. We can't afford to bring a union crew from LA to Philadelphia on this low budget. We shoot everything in LA, period. Of course, no one and expected the this. Is John G. Wilson Rocky. Thankfully, the producers changed their minds and hired my non-union crew from New York. I had made four movies with these guys, and they were great. One of them, Ralph Boda, went on to be nominated for an Oscar as cameraman for The Coal Miner's Daughter in 1980. You'll notice the only person you see sitting is Talia Shire. We had no chairs, no honey wagon. Lunch was pizza if we were lucky. And here's Lloyd Kaufman, our production manager. You'll remember him from the movie. That's me in Philadelphia being carried into the bar. I was drunk because it was cold and I wanted to be in character. And that's me in LA after I paid for my own round trip ticket. Still drunk. Lloyd went on to be president of Troma Entertainment and the creator of the environmental hero, The Toxic Avenger. I'm talking here with Jane Oliver, Sylvester's brilliant manager. He was devoted to her and she to him. They believed in each other. Sadly, Jane did not live to see Sylvester's triumph. Here's Joe Spinell, Sylvester's good friend who plays Mr. Gazzo. Joe appeared in the first two Godfather movies and in 1980, Maniac, the classic horror film. Oh, and here's your beautiful wife, Pat Kaufman. Yay! Pat became New York State Film Commissioner in 1995. Here we just finished rehearsing the interior car scene with Mr. Gazzo, Rocky, and Buddy. Mr. Gazzo's bodyguard. Gee, John, I, I never realized how much time you spent preening. Mm, I didn't either. Uh, remind me to cut this part. You'll notice there are no police or barricades. The neighbors were very friendly and supportive. Mike Westmore, our master makeup artist, came from a long line of Westmores from the early days of Hollywood. Mike created the makeup applications that made Sylvester look like a veteran from the ring. I learned on Rocky that if I stand around with my hands in my pockets and look menacing, somehow all the work gets done. My sons Jonathan and Anthony went to Philadelphia with me in September and helped me find the locations. Jimmy Gambino, one of Rocky's cornermen, helped with keeping the streets clean. Jonathan started his acting career in this scene. Sylvester was supported every step of the way by his lovely wife, Sasha. Sasha was also our still photographer while we were in Philly and took some great pictures. Rigging the car in our low budget was a challenge. I remember the first movie I worked on and how the cameraman was lashed to the front of the car. It worked. And it also worked on Rocky. And there was no camera truck pulling our car, and the actor actually did his own driving. You sure don't see that anymore. We only had 130, but I think he's good for the rest next week, Mr. Gazzle. Sure, Rocky. Bob's good for him. That's it for today. Did you get the license number? Of what? The truck that ran over your face. Our first night shoot was in front of 1818 Tusculum, where Rocky lived. Burgess Meredith was nominated for playing Mickey, Rocky's trainer. We were so lucky to have Burgess. The locals watered down the streets for us. We couldn't afford a water truck. Now it's getting time to shoot. Look how nice the wet street looks. That was thanks to the neighbors and their many buckets full of water. And it was free. Yeah, they did a great job. I remember when Sylvester first saw this, this scene and said, boy, weren't we lucky that the elevated train went by? Yeah, he must have forgotten that we had a production assistant down the track with a walkie-talkie. And when he said, it's coming, I said action. The film cameras were big and heavy in those days, not like the digital cameras of today.
We were in front of Mickey's gym rehearsing the next scene. We had to get this shot before lunch. To save time, I sent a production assistant out for pizza. Lunch was always pizza, and as I remember it, dinner was pizza too. I gave Jimmy Gambina a few hints about how to deal with the garbage cans. All our exterior daytime scenes were shot with natural light. We had no crew, time, or money for lights. As long as the sun was up, we were in business. And the sun was free. Yes, you can't beat that. And now we were ready to go. Hey, Ruff, heard you did real good last night. Absolutely, should have seen me. Don't you think you ought to take a rest? No, my back is hurt. Your back? My back is hurt. You deaf? Well, I'm short. My assistant cameraman was Ralph Hotchkiss. Ralph introduced me to Garrett Brown, the man who invented the Steadicam, though at the time it didn't even have a name. Without Garrett, we couldn't have gotten some of our best shots. Rocky was the second movie ever to use the Steadicam. The first one was Bound for Glory the year before. When I saw Garrett's sample reel, he had a shot of his wife, Ellen, running up the stairs of the art museum. I said, I know just where that's going to go. Before dawn the next morning, we were on the steps of the Philadelphia Art Museum. Garrett was getting ready for Rocky's first run up the stairs. A little later, we were ready for his next run. We had no idea that we were about to film an iconic cinema moment. All I knew is that I had to get the crew their breakfast, pizza for a change. And so we finished our shooting in Philadelphia and we were still under budget, thanks to our great crew. It couldn't have gone better. Oh, yeah.